Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Soleil Divine, and you're listening to the Just Your Way to 100K podcast, the show that gives you insight on a very profitable career in the insurance adjusting industry. Make sure to subscribe on your favorite platforms and share with anyone looking to get into a lucrative career. Today, <laughs> today we're going to be talking about the day in the life of an inside claims adjuster. The desk adjuster. Oh, man. So, whenever I get a claim, right, I also always let the insured, which is, you know, the person that owns the claim, I let them know the players in the game, right? Because it's very confusing when you have a property claim. Um, I let them know that I'm their inside adjuster, that there's an outside adjuster, and, you know, who all is going to be on the claim. But a day in the life for an inside adjuster really depends on what line of insurance you're working, first of all. Um, so if you're working a catastrophe, if you're working property, if you're working auto, everybody's days are going to be different. Why would the day be different? So I know why the outside and the inside, that's obvious. Right, right. So we're talking about the desk, right? Completely. Yeah. So your day is different because, uh, each line of insurance has different demands. Property okay. has different, you know, inner workings of things. Auto has its different workings of things. And your carrier may want things to be done a certain way. Mm, okay. So all of these things have and to be what, what, put into what's perspective. What's a carrier for those who don't know what a carrier is? So a carrier, for example, would be who I like to call Big Red, but I'm going to say their name. State Farm, Progressive, um, Allstate. USAA, the companies all of those. that own the policy, right? That are offering the policy. That are yes, correct. Yeah. yeah um, so depending on what they want, and then you could be working a catastrophe, and then everything's really out the window at that point because your day to day may be different. One day they may want this. One hour they may want this. The storm may have just broke, and we just want you to make calls uh, to to contact insurers. First contact. First contact. That's all you're going to be doing for the whole day or whatever. Um, so that'll change things depending on all of that stuff. But let's say um, you want, let's start with catastrophe let, since we're in that time period. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's start with catastrophe. Uh, I wake up. <laughs> yeah. I wash my face. I get cleaned up. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to my home desk. Okay. Yes. And you work in a catastrophe. Go. All right. You start at seven. And I mean, you need to, let's say you start at seven. That was usually my start time. Okay. Seven or eight, depending. Let's say today you start at seven. You got to start at seven. It's not going to flux, fluctuate. You're going to yeah, start yeah. at seven. That's it. Um, you're you're going to, I'm going to, for me, I'm going to go check my email first because I want to know what's going on. Is there okay. something new going on? Is there a new directive either from my manager or from the Department of Insurance? Has the carrier changed some things that they want? Is it something I need to urgently take a look at? So I'm taking a look at my emails first. Um, then I'm going to start looking at my voicemail. Because when, when you're insurance, when you're in insurance, you have a mandate to return emails and voicemails in a certain amount of time. So I'm checking the emails, checking my voicemails first thing. And then I also want to, um, in the morning while, you know, it's real early like that and people aren't calling me yet, I want to start getting payments out the way. Okay. Whatever authority requests that I put in, and an authority request, you'll find more out about this. I'm putting out a lot of lingo, so just stay with me. These are some words you're going to have to learn, so, you know, put them in your back pocket. When you uh, get on an assignment as a desk adjuster, everybody's going to be given a level of authority, meaning that's the amount of money you can pay out without having to ask somebody, can you pay it? <clears throat> Usually when you start a storm, let's say your authority is like 10000 And as they get more sure of you, you show yourself and your competence, they may up your authority level. So let's say I need to request an authority level because I need to pay out $50,000. I get that back. I'll be able to see that early in the morning. And I'm making those payments first thing before my phone starts ringing off the hook. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so, so, yes. <laughs> I said a lot, right? <laughs> right. Slow down. Yeah. I feel like I'm at the desk right now. I feel like, you know, uh, a little yeah, I feel it. Don't you hear it? Where's my money? Yeah. <laughs> because so, because we're in a catastrophe. So you're in catastrophe yes. mode. Mm -hmm. Yes. And these people are, may have their electric off. They mm -hmm. may 
They had no their water. Home destroyed. Yeah. They may be displaced. Yes. All of that. So be prepared for all of that. When there's a hurricane, just know at the minimum there's no electricity. There's no cell phone service. These people may they're they're gonna have they're gonna act like everything is urgent, which it is, but it's your job as the adjuster to bring the tone down, to calm it down, show empathy, and know that you have to be thinking rationally above everybody. Gotcha. Because you have to stay in tune with the policy. If you talk to an insured and they're calling you all morning and saying, well, you're trying to make a payment, they're calling you and saying, hey, my electricity is out. I need a generator. You got to let them know these are the rules for generators. And it's not just because your electricity is out. You have to stand firm and not just give them whatever they want. Because in a catastrophe, when you first start working, you have the tendency to want to just help people. Yeah. You know what I mean? But this isn't your money. Is is So... Real quick, adjusters. Sure. Go by the law. Yes. Not by the feeling. Yeah, you got to go by the policy. The policy is the law. It's the law. Uh Uh-huh. Yes, you got to go by the policy. So I said something about generators, right? Usually when there's a catastrophe, um, there's going to be no electricity. A lot of people down south, they have generators that are already connected to their houses. If they've been through this and they're experienced with it, they may have a generator connected to the house. They can afford it. Um, But some people do things like when their electricity goes out, they try to go buy a generator and then bill it to the insurance company. That is not uh, reimbursable per your policy. You purchase it after the storm that is what the insurance industry would consider a betterment and when you go through your course through adjuster pro they talk about a betterment and how you can't do it it's not elite it's illegal on the policy um so you have to explain that to the insured they don't want to hear that though how's that a betterment my electricity is off all you insurance companies are full of crap let them say whatever they're going to say this is the things that you're going to be talking about when there's a catastrophe this is the day of the life of a desk adjuster Yeah, yeah So you're going to have to let them know, keep referring back to the policy. Per your policy, per the Department of Insurance, per the government, we cannot provide a betterment. When you tell them that, they back off. They understand. It is what it is. And you let them know where it says that in their policy. And if you need to write a denial for that, um, you can give them the verbiage to do that. I know I've said a lot. Wow, this seems like a master class, doesn't (laughs) it? Doesn't it? Uh, (laughs) But these are things that you have to consider and things that are going to come up daily. For those who are going to be listening to this podcast... um, you know, via whatever you know, whatever means. channel <laughs> you choose. We're live on TikTok right now. Go follow uh, Soleil. You'll be in the know-how behind the scenes mm-hmm. uh, at Right to Live on TikTok. But we're live on TikTok right now. Shout out to Shout TikTok. Shout out to the TikTok followers who have been... I mean, pouring in questions. Diligent with questions. And they all want to know what is a day in the life of a desk adjuster. And the thing is that insurance is different every day, especially when you're working a catastrophe. It's going to be something different every day, every hour, Um, a different mandate, a different direction, depending on what's going on with the claims. So what else could happen, you're asking, right? Because by this time. So so now, mm -hmm. you started at 7. Yeah. It's 10 o'clock. Is it? Man, it feels like it's, it's noon because that's how quick the day goes yes. by. Like you blink, you open a file, and it's 12 o'clock. But it's 10. The phones are starting to wake up. People are starting to call. Okay. So you're getting calls about these generators. You got to let them know, hey, additional living expenses are handled like this. You know, it's not everything that you're putting out. You have to explain that to them. ALE is probably, ALE, additional living expenses, is probably the biggest issue when there's a catastrophe. Because everybody wants to go stay at this hotel, do that, and they want their self-reimbursed. So what are the top uh, instances? So a hotel is one. Um, what do you mean, for additional living expenses? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so your, your lodging, uh-huh. hotel, Airbnb, they need to provide... Or staying with family. Yeah, or staying with family, that's... That's permittable as well. Um, But here's the thing about ALE that gets confusing. It's only uh, for a mandated, uh, mandated when you're, when you have to, I'm forgetting the name right now. It's top of my head. When they say that you're mandated to evacuate, evacuate was the word. Um, When there's a mandatory evacuation, that's when the additional living expense kicks in. Or if there's some kind of uh, where your home is uninhabitable, but that word uninhabitable is, is very tricky. particular, very tricky. particular. So, what would you think would make your home uninhabitable uh, for the common person? Uh, the fact you don't have any water. No, no water, and my windows are broken. 
That may not necessarily mean that your home is uninhabitable. Wow. Just because you don't have any water does not mean it's uninhabitable. Wow. What kind of state are you in? Do you have any health conditions? Do you have do your kids or do you have any kids? Do they have any health problems? Do you have a generator? Um, how long has the power been out? Like power being out is not automatically. Water, that might be a little bit, but it's really a case by case basis. Um, and then if you have windows busted out, you can put a board over the window. Yeah. Um, but if you don't have a roof, then that's a different story. That's a different story. If you had a tree that fell onto the home and cracked the home in half, and now your living room is half tree, half living room, okay, we do need to put you somewhere. Um, but you have to be careful with the ALE because they may need Ooh-wee. ALE for, you know, this part, and then for the rebuild, they may need some there, and there's a limit for the whole claim on all of that. True. Hopefully, I understand what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Um, what else happened? So what time is it now, you think? So now, it's noon. It's noon. Okay. You think I'm going to lunch? (laughs) 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 I made myself laugh. All right, so it's noon. (laughs) That was a good one. That was a good one. (laughs) It's noon. The phone's picking up now. So the agents are probably calling by this time because, um, like when I worked in commercial insurance, you have agents, the agent's principal job is to sell a policy and to play customer service to the insured. True. They do not know the policy frontwards and backwards like the, uh, customer may think they do. And what agents, they hear a lot of information from the customer, so they try to mediate but the policy is the policy. So you have to not only, you're not only getting calls from insurance, but you're getting calls from agents. If you're looking for insurance, test your agent out. Test your agent out as a, as a property owner, yeah. as an auto owner. Don't depend on your agent to get you the right coverage. Because I'm going to let you know, and shout out to the agents, but I'm going to let y'all know some agents. Y'all give us hell as insurance adjusters. You guys are rude when, we, when you call us. People in your offices are rude. I have worked and talked to a lot of different agents. And usually the tone with agents is they hate us. And they treat us like shit, and they try to get adjusters fired. Michael Scott to Toby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for real. They don't like us. It's, it's a tone. So don't think that agents are your friends. I'm speaking to the adjusters. I'm telling you some real game because agents will try to get you fired just because they have written an incorrect policy for this insured, and now the insured isn't covered. Um, so around noon, you're going to start getting calls from agents. Just be firm with them. Be nice. I'm always nice to them, but, um, they don't know the policy and they're not a claims adjuster. They're not licensed. Uh, well, they're licensed as an agent, but they're not a licensed insurance adjuster. adjuster. It's a big difference. Um, so, all right. What time is it now? We didn't talk to the agents. We talked to the the insurers. It's two o'clock. All right. Two o'clock. Guess who else is calling? Contractors. Mm. Contractors, attorneys, uh, mitigation companies. Public adjusters. Public adjusters. All Man, of these y'all people. public adjusters in Florida? Hey, hey, shout out to the PAs in Florida. Y'all get to the B-A-G with a capital. <laughs> with a capital. You hear me? Every letter's capital. Y'all getting to it. The PAs, and I like working with PAs. You want to know why? Because they're gonna, everything's going to be structured for the most part. There are some that yeah. still use the AOL email addresses. You know who you are. Um, <laughs> but the PA claims, they're going to be structured. It's going to be a little bit better than dealing with an insured. They're going to come with an agenda. They're going to know what I'm talking about. And we're going to talk to them once a day or whatever, and that'll be it. Um, but, you know, you're taking calls from them. You're getting information, requesting information from different people, sending out letters letting people know what they need to provide to you. That's very important that you send out letters in the right amount of time um, per statute, per the state. Your carrier is going to give you guidelines on that, the statutes for the different state. Like you have to write a letter in Florida for a certain time period to just let the insured know what's going on with the claim. That might be different than in Pennsylvania. You know what I'm saying? So you're keeping track of all these things as you're going throughout the day, talking to these different people, paying out these claims, moving these claims forward. That's your job as a desk adjuster. Um, And then, so right now it's probably about four, right? Yeah, it's four. It's the end of the day. It's the end of the day? Fool. It's close. (laughs) Well, you know. Two hours away because we start at seven. We start at seven. Okay. So. 
Well, who else, the other person I didn't say that you were going to talk to is the field adjuster. Field adjusters okay. are the partner. They're the eyes and ears of the desk adjuster. So field adjusters may be reaching out to you to let you know some things, or they may have some estimates for you to provide to you. So you're going to be getting those throughout the day, checking it, and if you can, paying out on some claims and moving things forward. Um, so that's really what it is. You're, you're juggling a lot of things uh, as a desk adjuster, but you're the claim owner. You're the roller of the ship. You're the captain. In you the, the captain. In the in the middle of all this. Yeah. You got your superiors. You do. You've got your, your trainers. You've got your managers with their directives. You're probably going to be getting a lot of emails. Keep an eye on your emails because um they may have some questions or some things that are going on. You're going to be getting IMs. You're going to be IMing people. They're going to be IMing you, possibly your team members or whatever. Um, Do not do IM. So as an independent adjuster... Um, you are independent. You are your own business. And I want to wrap this up because, but do not get into a place where you start talking to carrier employees and agents over IMs. Don't talk to them on there. Um, try to have a phone conversation with them so they can't twist around some things that you may have typed. Just letting you know some free game, just plugging it in there. But you, you got to be mindful of all these things throughout your day. Not only are you looking out for your job and the insured and all these people are calling you, but um, sometimes as an IA, you have a target on your back because you may make more than a staff adjuster. And we maybe should do another podcast to talk about the whole dynamic. Um, but just you, these are all the things that are going on throughout your day. So you're wrapping your day up. Um, you're probably going to be telling the, your your trainers how much if, how much claim how many claims you got done there's a lot of data analytics so they've probably run the report and they know but when i was working in commercial for big red at the end of the day my trainers kind of wanted a count of how many tasks i was able to get done throughout the day so i'm turning that stuff in for me i like making notes of oh, you, <clears throat> you you're documenting all day oh yeah all throughout the day if i if it's not documented it didn't happen but at the end of my day, I like, you know, there might be something that I really want to get to the next morning, first thing, I want to make this payment. I'm making notes to myself of what claims I need to jump on tomorrow, what what I didn't get to today. And there you go. So, there you have it. A day in the life of a desk adjuster, mm -hmm. an inside adjuster. Property. I'm only talking property. property. <laughs> yes. Property. So, so, if you want to be an independent adjuster mm -hmm. because now you can do everything that i said from your home when i first started out i had to do everything that i'm talking about from my office with other people six to seven days a week 10 plus hours a day seeing these same people now i can do it from the comfort of my home yes if this is something you're interested in go to adjusterpro.com take the pre-licensing course it has a adjuster pro impeccable information over there their blog their blog alone like, they go very much in depth and let you know. If you're interested in that. First class. Yeah, I mean, first class operation. Shout out to Jesse over at Adjuster Pro. We appreciate you and everything you guys are doing over there. Um, use code SD2022 when you purchase your pre-license and course. And you'll save 10%. Save 10% on everything um, and get you into this career and this craziness that I just explained. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, it, it is crazy, but I think as you get more and more experienced, it becomes, I'm not going to say easy, but I can't believe the level of comfort I have now compared to when I first started. It yeah. definitely gets better. It, gets it definitely better. gets better. We appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in with us today on Adjust Your Way to 100K. Uh. Send us any comments, any, thing, any questions you have. We want to get a field adjuster on. Uh, yes. to talk about the day in the life because that's much different than a desk adjuster and we're doing property. We also field need to adjusters. talk to our auto people. So We need you. Yeah. If you, anybody in the field, hit us up. Let us know if you'd like to come on the podcast. Let's jam it up and talk about all the adjusting possibilities. <laughs> yes. And all the crazy stories you got. Yes. Adjust your way to 100K podcast. Subscribe, like, share. We out. We out. <laughs>